top of a decentralized our decentralized network. Uh, we see about two and a half million dollars uh, worth of transactions occur every day. It's a our token has a thirty million dollar um, uh, market cap. Uh, we've got about 3,000 um, holders that have a wallet uh, where that's cryptographically secured on our own network. Uh, so we're seeing thousands of transactions today. Uh, we've also built a, a rather robust community, about 7,000 different individuals. Uh, and we're starting to open up our network to be an ecosystem where other developers can build on top of. Just think of how developers build on top of smart contracts. Um, developers are starting to build on top of Constellation as well. Uh, and we're starting to introduce new projects like uh, our Lattice project, uh, which is an entirely new team that's building on top of Constellation's ecosystem that actually raised $3 million over the past month. Um, so we're pretty excited to kind of open up this network to create a robust ecosystem where uh, applications are exchanging data in a very secure and accountable way. I'll hand it over to Benjamin. Awesome stuff. Thanks, Mr. Jorgensen. Uh, yep, so back over here to, to Benjamin Diggles. Uh, I'm going to talk through a little bit about our partnerships, both in the public and private sector, um, and then talk a little bit about Moby, uh, and then we can start moving into questions and answers. Uh, this is a slide that we're very proud of here. Um, candidly, when we got into the business, uh, we, we didn't expect that would, we would be aligned with the federal space. Uh, that said, being kind of the business development guy, I had literally hundreds of calls with so many different uh, top tier enterprise companies that just weren't in a position to move very quickly on blockchain. And I'm sure a lot of those on the call that have tried the same can empathize. Um, and I think the big discovery around that was that uh, these enterprise folks, they, you know, they look at their data as, you know, IP and future channels of revenue, and that's very important to them. And so the idea of just kind of taking their data management approach and decentralizing it on an open network kind of gave them sweaty palms. And that, and that makes sense. Um, that said, we were very delighted to find out that the federal space actually really has a pretty good handle on what distributed ledger technology can, can mean to the market as well as to their own capabilities. And we got on the phone rather quickly with some of these folks in the military and they understood what consensus models were. They understood what micropayments and how crypto could be used in use cases. It was really refreshing, um, which is, you know, I think that there's the adage that the, the government is well behind. Um, so I'm very pleased to say that in the case of blockchain, they actually are, in my opinion, maybe two or three times ahead. Um, so since we are focused around big data, uh, and of course the mobility focus, which we'll touch on, also handles a big ecosystem of, of interoperable data that needs to be you know, managed appropriately. The, the US Air Force is one of the largest data, if not the largest data creator in the entire world. Um, and that's very, as you can imagine, there's a lot of different levels of sensitivity when it comes to that data. And Egg sits on top of a decentralized, our decentralized network. Uh, we see about two and a half million uh, dollars worth of transactions occur every day. It's a, our token has a $30 million um, uh, market cap. Uh, we've got about 3,000 um, holders that have a wallet uh, where that's cryptographically secured on our own network. Uh, so we're seeing thousands of transactions today. Uh, we've also built a, a rather robust community, about 7,000 different individuals. Uh, and we're starting to open up our network to be an ecosystem where other developers can build on top of. Just think of how developers build on top of smart contracts. Um, developers are starting to build on top of Constellation as well. Uh, and we're starting to introduce new projects like uh, our Lattice project, uh, which is an entirely new team that's building on top of Constellation's ecosystem that actually raised $3 million over the past month. Um, so we're pretty excited to kind of open up this network to create a robust ecosystem where uh, applications are exchanging data in a very secure and accountable way. I'll hand it over to Benjamin. Awesome stuff. Thanks, Mr. Jorgensen. Uh, yep, so back over here to, to Benjamin Diggles. Uh, I'm going to talk through a little bit about our partnerships, both in the public and private sector, um, and then talk a little bit about Moby, uh, and then we can start moving into questions and answers. Uh, this is a slide that we're very proud of here. Um, candidly, when we got into the business, uh, we, we didn't expect that would, we would be aligned with the federal space. Uh, that said, being kind of the business development guy, 
I had literally hundreds of calls with so many different uh, top tier enterprise companies that just weren't in a position to move very quickly on blockchain. And I'm sure a lot of those on the call that have tried the same can empathize. Um, and I think the big discovery around that was that uh, these enterprise folks, they, you know, they look at their data as you know, IP and future channels of revenue, and that's very important to them. And so the idea of just kind of taking their data management approach and decentralizing it on an open network kind of gave them sweaty palms. And that, and that makes sense. Um, that said, we were very delighted to find out that the federal space actually really has a pretty good handle on what distributed ledger technology can, can mean to the market as well as to their own capabilities. And we got on the phone rather quickly with some of these folks in the military and they understood what consensus models were. They understood what micropayments and how crypto could be used in use cases. It was really refreshing, um, which is, you know, I think that there's the adage that the, the government is well behind. Um, so I'm very pleased to say that in the case of blockchain, they actually are, in my opinion, maybe two or three times ahead. Um, so since we are focused around big data, uh, and of course, the mobility focus, which we'll touch on, also handles a big ecosystem of, of interoperable data that needs to be you know, managed appropriately. The, the US Air Force is one of the largest data, if not the largest data creator in the entire world. Um, and that's very, as you can imagine, there's a lot of different levels of sensitivity when it comes to that data. And a lot of these systems that they rely on are very legacy. I mean, this stuff, some of it predates the internet. And so for them to have the ability to interoperate that data in a very secure fashion amongst different domains or constituents or different agencies, if you will, is not a trivial task. Um, so we wrote a proposal last year um, that was accepted around the topic called multi-domain command and control, which has since been updated to joint all domain command and control. So you hear me say that a couple times. And really that's predicated around that use case I just explained, which is moving data from these legacy systems to either hybrid or cloud environments, but doing it in a secure way where the data types may need to have a certain level of masking that are really, really poignant or deep embedded into those da that data in transit. And so um, we're very fortunate to be one of the first two companies to ever wor secure a working contract with the, the US Department of Defense. A uh, big shout out to Simba Chain being the other one. We, we think nothing but great things of them um, and wish them the best of luck. That said, we are the only core protocol that's really focused on these big data standards. And so very proud of this slide because all of these partnerships happened in the last 12 months. Um, and really, even though we do have ties with the Navy and the Army and some of these other large three letter agencies, the US Air Force is our main focus. And it goes back to that main point of while supply chain management is very interesting and kudos to IBM's Hyperledger Fabric for getting some really great stuff going with Maersk and others, as well as DLT Labs doing what they're doing with Walmart Canada. Um, we really wanted to focus, uh, you know, on the, the big data issues, the stuff that has to do with mission control planning data that streams at large scales within the US Air Force. So um, we have written proposals and looked at some supply chain management, but we're largely focused on that data in transit. And so uh, within this group, uh, the, the main focus we're looking at is a group called US Transcom. They're the ones that focus on all the data that comes in from multiple domains and then is responsible for organizing it, protecting it, and sending it out. Um, and then sometimes that data even needs to go to adversaries. So the level of protection or security is paramount. Um, and they have certain uh, levels of compliance they have to hit that's rather uh, hardcore, if you will. Um, and so some folks on this call may or may not know, but there's a thing called a NipperNet and a SipperNet. And basically those are just uh, acronyms for secret service or secret networks versus public networks. And really those secret networks have a level of compliance that they need to hit in order for this data to be transmitted across them. And the level of, of manual uh, intervention that needs to take place is really not set up for the future of what true information warfare has uh, in store for it. So um, looking at the dot dash line and going down a layer, um, we've made a really strong partnership with Omni Air International, which is a commercial reserve air fleet partner, meaning that they have a big, mostly focused in the private sector, but they do public work and have a blessing, if you will, by the Department of Defense to take on missions as appropriate. Um, Splunk has a very large presence in the public sector. We're, we're strongly aligned with them. Um, great group, as Ben mentioned, a lot of people know who they are because you know they, they've made a, a pretty big impact in the industry. 
Um, and yeah, some of these other names like decisive point and decode are those that are really our handlers, if you will, to help us. Cause like I said, we never thought we were going to get in federal. And sometimes you need that extra help to understand all the acronyms and the rules of engagement and decorum and so forth. Um, we're also partnering with AWS web cloud. Um, and that's important because uh, getting system access and getting kind of that hosting environment blessing, if you will, is, uh, is one of the hardest parts of working with the government. And so having these types of uh, handlers that really help us is, is paramount. So, and then LMI is a great example of what, what I would see as a systems integrator like a Deloitte or an Accenture that focuses strategically on adding new capabilities to customers like those three letter agencies within the Department of Defense. And Ben mentioned Space ISAC. The one thing I will say about that group is it's a, it's a green field. You know, it's, there's a lot of opportunity in space right now. I don't think people think about it as much as they probably should. Um, you know, if you think about a, a satellite sending a signal down to a GPS sensor, and if somebody was able to spoof at the satellite level, you could really cause a lot of problems. So the, with more and more satellites coming online, the, the security is extremely important. And uh, so we're very lucky to be at the table at that. Um, just a, a shout out from the U.S. Air Force. This just shows that uh, we've been validated rather deeply. Um, I'm not going to lie. It's been really hard work, uh, mostly just because it's like learning a new language, working with some of these different groups. And what's interesting is when we went in, we were really you know, bullish on, on these threat vectors saying, oh, man, we can take streaming you know, uh, sensors off of an F-35 war combat fighter and ensure that it has consensus or in a mesh network capacity with other uh, war fighters to ensure that there's no spoofing or man in the middle attacks or, or so forth. And while they thought that was really great and they did support the, the vision, um, going back to streaming data that has uh, some of those fields or columns that may be top secret that need to be scrubbed or masked, if you will, at scale is not only just interesting to the U.S. Air Force, but interesting to um, the, the Border Patrol, the uh, IRS, um, you know, pretty much anybody that's managing any data that has some level of sensitivity, it applies to all these different domains. And when you think about joint all domain command and control, if anybody's listened to the Pentagon speak about some of the new capabilities they're putting out, joint all domain command and control is the centerpiece of their vision. And it makes a ton of sense. It's not a whole lot different than what we're experiencing in the mobility community. Mobility is a massive ecosystem. Everything down to you know, electric grid charging, to IP-enabled traffic lights, to you know, head units and drive shafts. I mean, there's so many different parts and so many different constituents, if you will. And going back to private companies being very cautious about their IP and the security, uh, a lot of the, the promise of interoperability hasn't come to fruition until distributed ledger technology came about. And then all of a sudden you have folks like BMW and Daimler that are saying, great, we now can share data knowing who owns it with that true trust, uh, trustless network lineage. Um, but we also know that we don't have to worry about security as much and we can actually have a solution to attack those, those threat vectors, if you will. And so that applies also to this multi-domain approach when we look at all these different constituents within the DOD that are needing to exchange data securely. Um, but what's great is that they don't look at data as IP. That's been a big reason why it's been easier to work with them is that they're not cautious about us, you know, leaking this to one of their competitors that can make money off of their, you know, sacred IP data. Sure, they're worried about us leaking it to an adversary or so forth, but the way that they manage and handle data is a little bit more about how do we make it work for us versus how do we make money off of it. Um, and so it's, it's a little bit of a different paradigm. And those that may remember the, you know, the internet came out of the government, that HTTP protocol was validated by the government first before it made its way into the commercial space. And we see ourselves kind of following that foot, you know, that path of, of validating our technology with the DOD as it starts, as the commercial space becomes a little bit more warm and open to deploying true adoption solutions. So as far as our other partners, um, 
which we're also very excited about. And this isn't the full list because there's some names that we're not allowed to share here, but we do take a multi-pronged approach. You know, Mr. Jorgsen mentioned earlier that Constellation really is an ecosystem. Um, we're not a one-trick pony. Um, we're really focused on multiple entry points. And with academia, we've got some really great, not only partners when it comes to the research side, but also from kind of the, the packaging and deployment side. Like we really want to allow students, as an example, to learn how to add end-to-end -end cryptographic security to streaming data sets in a very easy, manageable way by giving them bite-sized playbooks that they can deploy from not only a, you know, a research perspective, but also with some commercial customers that may be looking for early stage POCs. I've already covered the public sector um, and some of those names in, that we're working with. And uh, in the private sector, there's names that we've already discussed here as well. Um, we have a few others that we're excited to be uh, showcasing here in short order. Naturally, we think the world of Moby. Uh, we have your logo in our signature. Uh, we're very proud to be a part of Moby because of what I said earlier around the ecosystem and us being able to collaborate with so many great minds. And then lastly, of course, we have strong blockchain partners. We, we consider uh, ourselves partnering with some of the market leaders in the space, and there's other names beyond this, but of course, we think the world of Quant and Chainlink. Um, ben, I'm not sure if you want to mention something about Lattice real quick, or if we... Yeah, I, I mean, just to you know, talk a little bit about the blockchain ecosystem, um, you know, while Benjamin's talking about data validation, really what what we think of data validation is really the basis of every application in the world is creating data uh, and connecting to other microservices or other app software applications. Um, and so we really are, are pushing the needle to evolve Constellation Story to be that ecosystem that developers can uh, build applications on top of a robust infrastructure and Lattice is uh, one of our first uh, marquee uh, um, projects and companies uh, that's built in the cryptocurrency space around decentralized finance. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, raised about $3 million in the course of a couple weeks. Um, so there is a, there's a huge appetite around um, our, 